Hello there everyone, welcome back to another episode of our Hannibal at the Gates campaign, and let's go ahead and jump right into it, shall we? I'll go ahead and unpause the game. We are letting our aggressive expansion slowly, and I mean slowly, tick down. I would love to one day get that back close to zero. Of course, that's not going to happen, but the reason I want it close to zero is because of that wrong culture happiness modifier. And as you can see, I have a ton of people not in my culture, so we need to sort that out. This is really where the Romans actually get a huge advantage early in the game because they can do so much conquering of territories where the people are of their culture. And people of your culture, they're more productive, they're happier, they are better loyalty. And so Rome, once they get to a certain point, like then they can focus on converting pops once they are conquering little bites of the world. But Carthage starts out with so much territory that just isn't of their culture. It's kind of like the Phrygians in that way. And let me tell you, the Phrygians, they can be quite the headache to play at the first. All right, let's go ahead and get back. Ooh, we have some barbarian issues. Where are those barbarians? Let's check it out. Ooh, you're way over here. Um, let's actually go ahead and place these ships. We'll just see if these 10,000 horsemen are enough to deal with the barbarians. I kind of like having these fast action armies that can deal with barbarians really quickly. We'll load you on some ships and we will take you down here. Actually, we'll take you to here. See if we can defeat these barbarians before they become too much of a pain. And of course we have pirate issues. We always have pirate issues. Yeah, it thinks we're going to win this pretty easily. I don't doubt that at all. We are waiting until we can... Oh yeah, no. That was easy. You should gain some popularity. Cool. How's your prominence looking? Alright, so you're very prominent because you're a general. Of course you're very, very prominent. Unfortunately, you're incapable. Which means you're going to lose a little bit of prominence per month. But we, you still should be fine. Let's go ahead and end this barbarian threat once and for all. Meanwhile, anyone willing to trade with this? Nope, not that I can see. Yep, we're going to win. Let's go back to it. We have defeated the barbarians, and we will bring our little quick response army back home. I want to grab some more technology. Wrong culture happiness is probably where I'm going to go. Monthly ruler popularity gain is good. But not super... F I mean, no, monthly ruler popularity gain is very good. That army weight modifier is also very good. Sacrifice the gods. Wrong culture group happiness. Might so do I have two for wrong culture and wrong culture group happiness? All right. I need 372 gold to get an invention. Man, these inventions are not cheap. Meanwhile, the Romans are continuing to expand. That is what I want to see. I want to see the Rome get super strong. I think in the new update of the game, Rome should always get super big. I did leave a um, an, an Observer game just going for... I've, I've left a couple of them now, and honestly, I've been both at times happy and at times pretty eh about how Rome expanded in like my first observer game they took over all of Italy most of Greece and actually a bunch of Atolia but nothing really else then another one they kind of went northward and took over half of Gaul but that was like all they did they didn't even finish conquering the boot uh, I would really you know what we could gain a marketplace or we could grab 20 gold I think I should just go ahead and take the free marketplace I don't know where. I didn't even look at what city that was being built in. Is it being built in Carthage? No, but we could build a new building in Carthage. Well, what would we build in Carthage? 
let's take a look at our pop ratio. Currently we are demoting some tribesmen into a slave. Or do you know what I could do? I could wait until we get 400 gold. I could not take an invention. I could wait until we get 400 gold and turn Carthage into a metropolis. That's honestly needed, I believe. And of course we have another barbarian incursion. Uh, the influence of the Hanneded family. Basically, I get this event because one, I am a Hanneded, Hanned, and one of my people died, which means I had a Scorn family because I didn't have enough jobs and then immediately it doesn't even give me enough time to really get in there and fix the issue it's like hey let's adopt someone which is fine that's fine of course yeah you know what i don't really i'll do this researcher oh i didn't even look where are the barbarians coming from back here again all right well one more time second verse same as the first am i right let's go ahead place this army into this navy and let's sail it down, yep, I see that, to Bubactus. We need a new governor in Sicania, or Sasania. Don't really want to put Jugurtha. Man, what a name. Jugurtha? Jugurtha. I think I'm going to put uh, Massivia, or Massiva, in charge. Good for him. And let's see, do I want to turn Carthage into a metropolis, or do I want to grab another invention? Specifically, I think I would go with the army weight modifier, since I'm going to be fighting in some pretty low civilization level territory over in Iberia. Having that army weight modifier will help me not lose near as many troops. So yeah, I'm going to go with it. Meanwhile, for the first time in a really long time, I am down below 30 aggressive expansion, so that's something. I think I'm actually just going to go ahead and move one slave pop to Carthage. Doesn't really matter where I move him from. I did that just so I will... well... I thought I would give me an extra die. Apparently not. Okay, every 18 slaves. You know what? Let's go ahead and move three more then. We are, of course, victorious. Don't worry about that. And, once again, the barbarians have been vanquished. I could put an army down here just to keep me safe from barbarians, but I don't really care to do that. And let's move our army once again into a safer location. I also should probably build up a fleet to start hunting pirates. I am making more and more money now, which is good. I'm gonna go ahead and improve opinion here. What did that do? Absolutely nothing. I think I might as well try to annex some of those territories on Sicily. I'm gonna go ahead. I know that I'm saving up money for another invention as well as to turn Carthage into a metropolis, but I'm gonna build two temples in this city. Let's just keep trying to convert all of these pops. We're doing a decent job. Well, actually, there's no reason to build any temples here. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel those. Whoops. Let's see. I'm going to build a library, though. Yeah, I think a library is good. Let's look at you. You have six pops here. Oh, this is just a little settlement. You produce grapes. Cool. Or wine, I mean. Ooh, you're not loyal, but you're gaining loyalty. Good. 
Meanwhile, you two are gaining loyalty quite quickly. I think I'm going to put you back on cultural assimilation, though. And yeah, this little city is it's assimilating its pops pretty quickly. However, let's go ahead and... I guess I won't make that any faster. I can't because you don't have any... You are not loyal to me. I guess you could use a new job. Well, I definitely don't want Agball in charge. Ooh, I don't have any general that I really want in charge. Ooh, a gift horse. Carthage gets 200 gold. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and say that we are going to owe the Mercantile Faction. And we don't actually have enough political influence to become a metropolis yet in Carthage. So instead, I think I am just going to go ahead and click the National Slave Output button. It's going to make my slaves all that much more efficient and mean that I'm going to get just a little bit more money every month. In fact, I'm actually getting more from taxes now than I am from commerce. Interesting. The cor corrupt governor of Mauritania. Oh no. Hmm. I think I'm just going to send some advisors to uh, fix that. Let's go ahead and pause the game real quick while we put a new prominent family member in charge. Someone from the Gisco clan. Uh... Definitely this is a, a, a Gisco, though, because we don't want you gaining super amounts of prominence, even though you are absolutely horrendous at your job. about going ahead and declaring war now they would be joined by the Contesians they be, would be joined by quite the little power block here there's this country right there but oh and even you but here's the thing they're also at war with these two countries and that war seems to be at the current moment going kind of poorly for them they have a bunch of gold, but none of them seem to have a ton of armies. I could, if things turn dire, hire some mercenaries, of course. Yeah, you know what? Let's go ahead and do it. There's no time like the present. We're going to shove this through the Senate. That's going to increase our tyranny, but our tyranny is super low at the moment. Ooh, that's not good. That's not good at all. It seems like the... Populous faction it has gained a lot of influence. We can use some tyranny. We can gain some tyranny and try to gain some seats somewhere else in the Senate. Let's look. How close are you? Oh, there's no one even near. Hmm. Well, I could promote the religious faction. Try to get a second religious person in office. Let's see. Why are they all going to vote for you? Is this still the same dude? Agball. Man, Agball. I'm done with you, dude. How much life do you still have in you? Can I not... Can I just throw you in jail? Populous faction is going to gain... Plus five. What's that going to do to my... It's going to give me immediately... A bunch of tyranny. Well, you know what I can do for not too much tyranny? I can smear your rep. Let's make you a little bit less popular. That's going to take one vote away from you. Of course, that's not anywhere near enough to get Baal elected. So he is probably going to be joining us again. Although, let's go ahead and... The military faction is going to gain some seats in this play. The military faction has barely any seats right now. Only six. Yeah, let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to declare war. Our little city-states are going to join. This one could be kind of tough. I'll have to move my all my armies in the area. 
but let's go ahead and declare war and immediately move these two armies into a position to defend one another. I'm a little worried about these 9,000 troops, but soon I'm going to go ahead and move these horsemen that direction, so we'll embark them and then send this navy on its way. You'll dock here. Yeah, they're going to go right into the province of Sexy. We can't lose Sexy. That's the one thing we can't do. <laughs> I don't think that they have much of a navy. Yeah, they don't have any navy. So I'm going to actually just for now stay at zero naval maintenance. That could prove fatal. We have a chance to import some furs or some wine. Local Freeman happiness. I'm all for some local Freeman happiness. Also, you do need a new commander. And look who we have here. A decent commander. Let's put him in charge. His loyalty is going to increase. Perfect. Also, he is a member of the military faction. He's going to increase in his prominence pretty quickly now. And let's go ahead and grab this navy. And we will send them on their way as well. Alright, so... I won't be landing where I thought I was going to land. We'll land in Urkai, or Urukai, or Urki. And of course I have some barbarians. I could go deal with the barbarians real quick, or you can come here and deal with the barbarians, because you are, this is happening in this province, and you are a provincial army, so they can go anywhere in that province. I definitely want to avoid those pirates. I think my little army of 10,000 men plus the support of these 11,000 can take on just about anyone. And when I say 10,000 men, I mean 10,000 light cavalry. Take on just about anyone. I bet we can get here and become the defenders. I'm going to go ahead and move these 11,000 men towards that area. Nope. Oh, we are not going to be the defenders. But it's too late now. We have the better general. It's still... Who is the general of this army? Ooh, it's you. You've lost all your hair, unfortunately. Poor guy. He used to have those flowing locks. He's still very healthy, even in his old age. He is a grizzled cavalry commander. He is was at one point the... Ooh, I don't want to banish him. He was at one point the ruler of our country, although that was long ago. Now he is on the frontier fighting in the cavalry. I love this guy. I will note that... I feel more attached to my characters in a republic than I do in a monarchy. And I know that that's been one of the major things about this game, that people haven't felt attached to their characters. But, and in a republic, it's, it's kind of weird because I have to deal with so many characters. But also, I am thinking constantly about like, okay, I need to increase your prominence, decrease your popularity, increase your popularity, you know endorse the civic faction so that the populace don't take over. I'm doing that so much that I am getting to know the characters. I'm remembering who they are. And this guy, Abrami, or Abirama, Ab Abirami, was at one point the suffate of our country. I wish that it told you, like, gave you a little backstory about the person. Like, like if I came here, I wish that, or I just wish on this screen that it pops out, it would tell you like, hey, a little bit about this person. They were a researcher, they were a, you know, magistrate, and then they were the consul or the suffate from here to here. And like gave me a little bit more info about them, just so I knew like who they were, what they did. He's unfortunately dumb, but he's a tactician, so. He is dumb in the civic manners, but he is a brilliant military mind. He does have that horse archer... No, horse archer discipline, not like half. Doesn't do any good. He is going to fight this fi war, though. Or he's going to win this battle, though. Excellent work. He only lost 800 men while he killed over 2,300 of them. We'll go ahead and have him chase down some of these retreating armies. And he is going to retake the province of Sexy from us. 
which that's important. Owning sexy allows us to increase our food supply in the area. Sexy is very important after all. We're going to have some more pirate issues. Pirates are a plague. Let's go ahead and bring these 28,000 men. I'm going to try to avoid the pirates. We'll see how this works, but let's go ahead and bring them to Erky. We should probably stack wipe these 1,000 men. They have low morale. Yep, indeed. Stack wipe. We did lose some men. Ooh. Looks like we're going to take this fight. I could definitely win it if I move these 20,000 20, men off of this siege. The siege is not super advanced. I think right now it's important to win these fights when I can. There we go. Now we'll win the fight. Pretty easily, may I add. Let's go to the location. Yep, they've bypassed our army. We're going to take that fight there, though. Unfortunately, you can't move even in my own territory because of the heat. The enemy holds Elvira. How fun. They are movement locked. They're go we're going to take this victory, most likely. They're going to move another 8,000 men in, but I actually bet we get the victory before then. It looks like the casualties are relatively even. Ooh, they did, unfortunately, get that second army into the fight. We're going to go ahead and accept that offer for fish. We'll accept that offer for fish. And here we are. So we did, didn't take as many casualties as they did. And indeed, I think we are in a position where we can tank more casualties than they do. After all, you only have 199 manpower left. Let's see. You still have 16,000 men. I'm gonna move you back to this fort. We're going to beat those barbarians. Let's go ahead and finish them off. You, I guess, can just, if you're gonna sit somewhere, you might as well sit on this fort. Well, I take it back. We actually should have you increase your food supplies. Good, you've won. Great job on you. I like playing with these regional armies. I'm going to definitely have to do that in this campaign as I'm going to be conquering so much territory where the people are not my culture or my religion. Let's go ahead and use the supply wagons here to march overland and grab their this settlement. We have enough money for a new invention. Ooh, what should we get? What should we get? What should we get? We're not having any issues with loyalty at the moment, which is a benefit, I think, of the new character system. In fact, it might be even a little too easy to stay loyal, even in a big nation. That was one of the pains about the game in its previous state. You would have all these disloyal characters because you would have all these scorned families. And it was impossible not to have... It was impossible to really get all of your families under control. So you would just deal with scorned families because you would just have so many families. Now we don't have near as many great families. I like dealing with characters a lot more. And loyalty is much less of an issue. I think I'm actually going to go with wrong culture group happiness. Make them just a teensiest bit happier to be part of our grand empire. Or our grand republic, rather. And we're going to try to take the city of Elvira. Elvira, my heart's on fire. Elvira, giddy up, giddy up. Sorry about that, everyone. Well, we could hire Agbald. Uh, he's definitely the best member of the Badona family in terms of his charisma. 
Ooh, but we want someone really good with their charisma. So, someone really good with high statesmanship. Your statesmanship is unfortunately probably as high as we're going to get here. So I'm going to go ahead and go with Barakabal. Barakabal? Yeah, you get a score of 3. So, And you'll be increasing your statesmanship pretty quickly at 0.38% per month. Okay, good. But that means we do have a score in family. So I could think about grabbing another generalship or something, or just kicking out a researcher. For instance, you are a civic researcher. Actually, it would probably be better, can I kick out someone else? You're a minor character, you're an auger, you me increased. This one, are you a minor character? No. National Freeman Happiness, you're not a minor character. You're a minor character. Alright, yeah, this one. This guy. We can put a Bedona person in charge here and be just fine. Unfortunately, Sexy is going to fall again. It fell to this fort for some reason. Don't really know what happened there. They're, they do have quite high fort defense in both of these forts. Fortunately, our magistrate has reported a death, a notable death. That's a shame. We are going to move some slaves around after capturing their territory. Ooh, reading the entrails on behalf of the pious Metallo Handed has come to us, indicating that the priests and holy ones in... Intending to the faithful are finding the long hours of his service particularly taxing. He proposes that in return for support of the senators he can sway, we institute a policy of shortened work hours for priests. Uh, omen duration minus 25%. They'll be more likely to support me for two years. I could lose a bunch of money. You know what? Omen duration minus 25% is not a penalty at all. It just means I have to click a couple buttons a little bit sooner than I would otherwise have to. We really need this fort to fall. It does have a decent fort defense. I'm a little worried about these 18,000 men. I have these fast troops to reinforce, although they are currently losing food, but they are ready to reinforce whichever way they can. Actually, they're not losing food because they're not taking attrition. They're fast, so they can definitely get back in time to relieve pressure on the city of Elvira, or the siege of Elvira. Ooh, and the siege of Elvira has been won. We're going to send some slaves back to Umban and some other city. So that's going to free up these 28,000 men. Unfortunately for us, they Elvira is not a province capital. So I'm actually going to go ahead and retreat back to Sexy because I need more food for this army. Speaking of food, how am I doing over here? Yeah, you have plenty of food. But before I start another long siege, I'm going to need some food for this army. Let's go ahead and move you back and just recapture some of this territory that had been taken from us. The warm period, our people, farmers and nobles alike, uh, basically let us hope for good, more good times ahead. We are going to have some barbarians. Good, I'm glad you popped up right next to an army. Let's go ahead and deal with you. And, in fact, we actually just stack wipe them, so. Barbarians defeated. Currently we have a negative war score because they have plus or minus 17 war score, or we have seven, minus 17 war score because we don't control the region that we are attacking for. We need to fully occupy this little country's lands. These 38,000 38, men don't really scare me, but 
I am going to proceed with a little bit of caution. Thankfully, we have gone ahead, defeated that fortress, and now our troops can just pile through these gaps. In fact, I don't think they have another fortress, which is going to allow us to quickly siege down the rest of their territory. Okay, well, let's go ahead and move these horses here, these 19,000 troops here. And this should be a huge victory for us because they don't even have full morale. We are going to be the defender. Uh-oh. You know what? I don't care if Agbal's very displeased. His loyalty has been at zero for a long time now. I am just ready for him to be done. He's 51 years old. I'll tell him to just wait a little longer. We do still have to worry about the fact that we have a member of the populist faction about to take power. There's nothing really we can do about that. And so, unfortunately, it is just what it is. We'll just have to watch out for that in the future. They are going to take absolutely tremendous casualties. They, after all, were the defender. Let's take a look. Yeah, so they were the defender, so they get a terrain penalty. And our armies are just better. It looks like they're rocking with mostly light infantry. And there they go. These elephants, of course, can punch through just about anything. And in fact, as Carthage, I should probably be playing with more elephants. It's just that elephants are so expensive, you know? Anyway, we still have minus 20 war score because we don't control the war goal. What is the war goal? It is take Massiana. Province of Massiana, I guess. We should go ahead and keep conquering. Nope. You actually don't have the food that I want. Enough food, I think, to take that fortress, so... Let's not move this army onto another fort and have it siege down quite yet. Go ahead and trade some grain, why not? We are slowly resupplying our food into this army of 28,000 men into the 4th army. The third army, which is our quick cavalry army, is has taken this territory, which means we are now going to be resupplying food to both of these armies as well. We have another opportunity for an invention. I think that army morale recovery will be very helpful in the long run because... Is there anything else that's super helpful? Wrong culture happiness. Now... Wrong culture happiness and wrong culture group happiness are two separate things, so... In fact, I'm probably actually going to bypass on wrong culture happiness for now, because right now, in the my culture group, there aren't a, a ton of different, like, minor cultures that are in my culture group. It's just kind of punic. So I think I'm going to get... Starting experience would be nice. Loyalty. I'm going to get the army morale recovery. And we'll trade away some salt. Anything we can do about this election? No, it doesn't. And I'm a little worried that I'm going to have a similar situation soon unless we start losing some support from the populist faction, which does not seem like it's going to be a thing that happens anytime soon. Fortunately, the mercantile faction is going to continue to grow as well as the civic faction. So both the mercantile and civic factions are actually going to grow faster than the populist faction because their senate influence is super high because, well, actually it's going to decrease once to a much more respectable level once they're no longer in power, won't it? Oh well. Also, we should look at... Are there any other laws that I might want to grab? I could keep... 
going with monthly corruption down. So maybe this endorsed legislative body would be a good one to change. I think this fabricate claim cost is probably the best one to do. It also gives me civic faction influence plus 0.1. Just help me increase the power of the civic faction. I'm okay with that. And that's the only law change I want to make. I'm making this... I feel like now is a decent enough time to make this because we're not in danger of losing this next election. But negative stability it do, does increase the amount of support for the populist faction. So this gives me at least a little bit of time to try to recoup my stability and kind of recover before the next election. How is your food doing oh and there is the new election we are our stability is going to suffer indeed in fact our stability suffers so much so that i might think about when i get the chance to grab the extended terms but not yet Ooh, we're going to gain a ton of money basically because our senate is doing really good Perfect. Well, let's go ahead and hire someone new. What do we think? Might as well go with the mercantile faction, right? Or I could hire Bod Melquart. Man, what a name. Bod Melquart. I could hire him. He has high statesmanship and he will keep pushing it towards the civic faction. Alright, yeah, that works. Plus 0.5. That's actually really good. So the civic faction is going to gain grow immensely. Which is good, because we have to counteract this gain by the populist faction. So, in fact, I might go ahead and... I, my... Well, I don't really want to lose any more stability, so... Yep, I knew he was going to be an issue. He's that guy who's just prominent. I could smear his reputation, but honestly, it's not going to do me a ton of good. Let's look around yeah so if I can just keep influencing the civic faction which it's going to rise quite quickly compared to even the populist faction all right so we're, we're good for the time being let's go ahead and ooh, do you know what since we had that just sudden influx of gold and weren't really planning on it let's go ahead and change Carthage into a metropolis Carthage should be a grand metropolis after all Let's go ahead and nope. <laughs> I just want them to keep keep regaining their uh, food stores. It's a little it's slow, but we're going to need it. Am I at war with you? I am. Which means I'm gonna just move my army right on in there. I guess you can come and try to protect some of this territory. Alright, so there we go. I think that for now this is uh, all the territory I'm going to try to grab just because of the aggressive expansion. Although, I could maybe... I'm not even going to knock out this one... Ooh, the Slinger Port. Might as well grab that. Um, ah, I want this city as well. Okay. So, let's push you on this city... And we will just continue to try to fight off these two armies. Alright, they're not going to be able to run away from us. Man, that's the benefit of having this speedy little army. Doesn't have any supply wagons to slow it down. Ooh, actually they do get away from me. Well, let's go catch them again. There, they won't get away from me this time. Probably. We do have a white piece imminent, although the war goal is still being contested. Ooh, and even just our cavalry army is going to just wreck them. That's perfect. Did 
Tell you what, I wouldn't necessarily mind grabbing a subject state here. Like just a small one. Nothing super crazy. Oh, look at you. Crossing over. Trying to take on this city. Now, we sh I wish we'd noticed that a little bit earlier because uh, this city is pretty well defended. I thought at one point about building an extra fort level onto it. I kind of wish I had now. Because I'm not sure this army is going to get there in time. It does have good, a ha nice fort supply. How did they just bypass this fort? That's my question. Come on, Paradox. How did they bypass this fort? How'd they get by it? You wouldn't let me buy it. Why let the AI buy it? Or did they land troops... in some other fashion. I'm going to, once again, improve opinion with these people. No one's going to be upset about that. There we go. Because I'm still trying to get grab this one mission, the Heirs of Tartesia. And, unfortunately, I think that's all the time I have for today. We've been going about 40 minutes. So look for the conclusion of the war in tomorrow's episode. And uh, hey, if you've stuck around this long, there's no real reason not to hit the like button. So definitely hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I will definitely see you on the next one.